every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Tune in here. We're going to be covering all the things regarding testing and debugging with an awesome cast of some hot topics with meaningful takeaways. So again, here at 11 a.m. every Monday. So today, what we're talking about when is when inspecting network traffic isn't enough. And a little bit about myself. My name is Eve Terzillo. I'm on the developer relations team at Progress, and I'm responsible for all things Fiddler. And what I want to go over today is we all know how important inspecting network traffic is, but what can we do beyond that that's going to deliver us successful outcomes and make the difference in our productivity? So let's get started. Here's a fun fact. Developers are spending about 1,500 hours annually on debugging. So we're talking about a whole new level of problems that you're dealing with now than you were even a few years ago. And what are some examples? It's always good to share. We have newer programming languages. We have security vulnerabilities, which we hear about every day, and inevitable coding errors. So these three things combined uh, it can be a real game changer in your day-to-day -day work. So just a little brief intro about Fiddler. Um, many of you are already aware of Fiddler and it is a web debugging proxy um, and it works on any system and platform. And what a proxy does is it sits between your computer and the internet. So with Fiddler, you can inspect and edit the data and monitor and modify responses. And what's really cool is Fiddler is that tool that helps you deliver successful outcomes, which I talked about. I like to explain it, you can't fix what you can't see, and Fiddler gives you that insight you know, behind the scenes. Um, in 2012, Telerik acquired Fiddler. In 2014, Progress acquired Telerik. And Fiddler is professionally supported by a team of dedicated developers, designers, and architects. And that really is a key differentiator. And one thing I hear a lot is people are familiar with what Fiddler does at a high level but they've never really unpacked all of the functionalities that are within um, Fiddler Everywhere. And that's one of the things I wanna go over today to show what it can do for you. So to dive right in, as applications and systems be more complex, we really need a plan, right? We need a plan, we need a guide. So what's your plan in terms of handling app verification? You know, when it comes to collaboration, um, who do you turn to for support? And that's where I like to talk about that nothing be quite beats Fiddler for the full visibility of what it offers. Simply put, it lets you fiddle with the network traffic and some key benefits that I know you'll be interested in are, you know, it supports um, for any client side server platform, um, visibility into cookies, headers, um, your cache, traffic recording, playback, and we have things in terms of decryption and rule builders and it goes on and on. But the focus of this is to really go over the scenarios that Fiddler can help you solve and what you can take away um, to make your job easier. So let's start with a scenario that's pretty common. You know, you are need to verify your app, you're close to release, you need to test the quality. Overall, you think you're in pretty good shape, yet there are specific cases you need to test. And this is where Fiddler comes in. We start, the first thing uh, is to look if there's any failing requests. We've all been through this. So what we'll do in this particular scenario, first good step is to look for any problems like 400s or 500s. So what I'm using here is a hash node test site. I'm clicking around generating traffic. I have Fiddler everywhere running in the background, capturing um, these traffic requests and activity. So you see, and then I go, here's Fiddler. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the filter function. And quickly, I'm going to put, I'm looking for requests that contain a 400 or 500. I hit filter. And there's none found. So this is a great way to get this test done in seconds. And I know that there are none, none of those things that are still waiting around or that could be pestering. So another one that comes up a lot is when you need to simulate unauthorized access. We'll walk through this quickly. So this is helpful when I'm gonna go in to Fiddler, I'm gonna clear all the sessions because I wanna create something new and I wanna write a story. And what I wanna do is I wanna create this story request and I go in to find that within Fiddler. I go into the new rules tab and what I wanna do is emulate the server returning a 401. So I go ahead, I hit predefined response and from the dropdown, I click 401 
You can see it here. I hit save. I go back to my browser. I'm going to refresh the app. I'm going to hit on write again. And presto. So you can see it looks like it properly delivered the right message. You know, it's prompting me for those credentials. So to give you an idea without Fiddler, what you'd have to do is you'd have to connect to the server, you'd have to validate the tokens, and then you take those tedious actions, I'm sure you've all done, to do the same thing, which above really took a few minutes. So here's another good one, um, a server error scenario. We've all been through this, but let's see how the scenario looks when using a tool like Fiddler. So I'm gonna use a similar approach to what I did earlier, but I'm, this time I'm gonna return a manually crafted response. So I go into my rule and instead of the uh, manual response, I'm gonna click the, oh, put the manual response, sorry about that. And I already had the response I wanted in there. So I paste that in, I go ahead and execute it and I go back to my site, I hit write, and you see it returns um, the error. Now, there's some more takeaways here besides it returned the error. What we know, it's not user-friendly, right? I mean, the expectations are high with your visitors, and to get this very generic um, error message is not a great user experience. It offers them you know, no constructive information on where to go, they're lost on this page, so this would be a good test for me to run and say, this page needs some love, could benefit for some empathy. Since I know what's going to happen, I can get this over to my web team to ensure that this is fixed before I push this live. So another big one that comes up a lot is slow connections. You know, whether it's because of geography or other things that are out of our control, we are gonna have slow internet connections. And what we can do here in this particular scenario is we can find that create story request again and create a new role. And what I'm gonna do is simulate a delay. And in this delay, I'm going to set it at 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds, and hit save, execute that. And then I'm gonna go back to write. And I'm gonna click on write. You see now we're experiencing that five second delay. So everything loads properly, this is good. So we can confirm that we tested, it acts as, as designed, and we can move on to the next scenario. So what happens when the CSS file gets delayed? This is something that I hear about often. So this is a good test to see how it looks before the styling gets downloaded. So to avoid, to avoid having a good looking app, you know, we go ahead, we find that CSS request in Fiddler. I already am the QA, so I know which one I'm looking for. I click on that request and I'm gonna add a new rule. And for this, I'm gonna set the delay to five seconds or five seconds, which again, 5,000 milliseconds. I'm gonna name this rule so you can see I have a list of rules here, but just so I can differentiate between my rules, and then I can use them later by using that toggle on and off. You can see the toggles on in green right now. And I open the new browser instance, and I wait for the CSS file. So right now you can see the app isn't loading any visuals, you know, until that styling gets downloaded. This isn't the best user experience. What would be better is if we had some type of simple loading indicator, just to let um, the visitor understand what is happening you know, behind the scenes there as they're waiting for that page to load. Because we're all familiar with Google Insights, everything's page load, optimization. Those are all very important things, whether for your experience, as well as for Google searches, not their algorithm. So now let's see what happens when the CSS file does not load at all. We like to assume this will never happen, but we know that it does. Okay, pull this up here. So 
So I need to reload something quite here quickly. Um, if anyone has any questions, please put them in the chat. I have my uh, colleague Cindy, who is here with us, helping out today. Okay, I was able to pull us back up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to show uh, when there's actual server drop. So in the Fiddler Everywhere Rules Builder, what this is called is a non-graceful close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find that page. And you can see that I am creating a new browser. And here are those images. And if we start scrolling, we're going to see it doesn't get any better which is unfortunate. Um, there are two problems here. You know, one, the blank page, which offers the user no direction, um, and then the unoptimized images. I mean, it takes forever to load. It's a bad impression. And we realize there are some things that could have been done to make sure that these images were resized uh, in the correct manner at the first place. And let's think about how Fiddler supports your efforts again in terms of collaboration. You know, the first step we just went over talked about things that you need to do initially to test your app. But let's say you are the QA person and you are lucky enough to work within a team where you have other people that you can delegate to. So you have a development team and you are on the front end, you know, finding those things, but you have the opportunity to send things for further troubleshooting. So this is where Filter Everywhere has those collaboration features that are built in. And it's a great way to share network debugging logs within your teams for quick analysis you know, and resolution. So the first one is let's say you need to report a bug and you have logs for the bug. So in this particular scenario, I'm the QA person. I was testing the application. You know, I found a problem. I went to edit my profile. I found the wrong name, um, so I updated it. It looked like it took, but then I refreshed the page and it went back. So I know this isn't right. So what I wanna do is I go into Fiddler, I remove all of the sessions, and then I go back to that page and I wanna reproduce all of these steps and what's happening um, in terms of the activity so I can share this with my dev team. So I go ahead, reproduce, add the test again, refresh, but now I have Fiddler capturing everything uh, behind the scenes. So now I have all of the sessions that just show everything that happened in all of those requests. I'm gonna copy all of those selected sessions and I'm gonna share them. And you know, with a couple of clicks of a button, I can go ahead, I can give these sessions a name. In this particular, I'm gonna say the update doesn't work. You can make it whatever you'd like. And then you can share via email all within the filter everywhere UI. So in this particular case, I'm gonna email it to my colleague who I know uh, could handle these type of things and help me get to the root cause. And I can add a little note if I want. I may have given them a heads up before, but I can just add a note just as a refresher. So there, you know, that demonstrates that successful handoff from the QA person to the development team who can investigate it further. So now let's switch hats again. So now I'm that developer and my job is to fix and investigate those recorded logs that I get from the team. So this scenario, I'm on the dev team. I click on the notification. I see that I got these logs. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look into the body. I'm gonna click into that session and see what's happening. And I can see where the error is. It looks like I used full name instead of name. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test this. I'm gonna load the request into the composer. I'm gonna change that parameter from full name to name and then go back to the page, refresh it, and see what happens. Um, you know, and now I can see that it has been updated and I can for, confirm that that is the problem. The fact that in my code, I had full name instead of name. So now that I've tested what I think the potential fix is, now I wanna go ahead and implement the fix. So 
So here we are in terms of testing the fix. So as a developer, I can want to simplify the fix, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do this by replacing the JavaScript file directly on the running environment. So I find the file responsible. And since I am the front end dev, you know, I already know the file name. I copy that in there and I am going to tell Fiddler that when someone asks for um, this file in the live environment, to return the local copy of this file. So you can see what I'm doing here as I'm going in. I am creating uh, my rule response file. I have that JavaScript file right here. I'm going to put that in its place. I'm going to shut off my other rule. And I'm going to run this. So this way I can simulate the deployment. So this acts as if I already deployed and refreshed. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that change. I'm going to hit save. And it was successful. So I let Fiddler do the job. You know, I made the change with the update on the page with that JavaScript file. And here I can say, I can see that the name is updated and I know I'm ready to uh, push this fix live. So those are some of those common scenarios. These are things that you can quickly do um, in the short amount of time that we've been together, we were able to go through quite a few things to see what errors we have, what we're dealing with, the test scenarios, you know, mocking scenarios, all of those things, um, which didn't take much time at all. So what kind of results can you expect to achieve, right? I mean, shipping better software is one, saving time for what matters most. Some of the things we went over are the things that you want to spend a majority of your day on, um, and have happy customers. Those are all important things. And at the end of the day, I mean, boosting your productivity and your teams is always a big win. Um, sometimes what I hear, it's hard to get started. You know, maybe it seems overwhelming, all of the things that Filter can do for you, but we've created a web debugging checklist. And this is really nice. So what it does, and it's available online too, on our website, but it gives you a rundown. And I worked with our development team on this to really make sure that it hones in to those things that you can do. Let's say you don't have days to try to get to the bottom of something. You know, no one really has that much time anymore, but maybe you have 30 minutes, an hour. Um, let's see what you can do in that time. You know, in terms of checking all the requests, and I won't read them all to you here, but you know, are you missing any requests? Did you clear the cache? Are there 401s, 403s? You know, checking that response content, that's huge. Um, looking for response times, you know, and then are there slow responses? You know, look for those extra conditions. And then a lot of them are best practices too, right? Let's take a look, you know, let's look at the response and request size. You know, which ones are the largest? Um, you know, are the resources compressed? Are they minified? Is a server returning more information than is needed? These are all things that well, might seem small separately. Combine can have a huge difference in your performance. Um, and this is something fun that we did with the team. We put together a quiz. It's what's your unique debugging personality? And I encourage you all to take it. It's really three minutes. Um, it talks about things that you find out about yourself um, in relation to your work style, as well as a little bit about your debugging personality to kind of put you into one of the um, three buckets of how you work best. And it's even fun to share with your colleagues so you can see how they work together and how either you're the same or you're different and what are some of those nuances and how you can better work together. So like I said, it is, it is meant to be fun, but at the same point, it is pretty insightful. And I think you'd find a lot um, of benefits from really just understanding other people's perspectives and motivations. That's always a good thing. And one of the things that's also, I think, important to mention is that, you know, Filter does deliver. I mean, we have hundreds of thousands of organizations that are using Filter. So I just put, you know, a logo collage in here just to give you an idea. Um, you know, Fiddler is a tool that can be used by a single developer as well as up to the enterprise. So it's really what you make of it. There's a lot in there. And what's really been exciting uh, beyond the Fiddler team is that the team is working at a rapid pace to really deliver um, an experience, you know, beyond what you may have uh, thought Fiddler had to offer. You know, Fiddler, 
Everywhere is an amazing tool um, that builds upon Fiddler Classic, which is the original, you know, Fiddler debugger, debugger that a lot of people are familiar with. But in a release we just had, we came up with the all new overview inspector. You may have noticed in the presentation, I didn't refer to auto responder, responder that is now the new rules builder. And we have new themes. So the very highly anticipated dark theme support is now available. So if you download Fiddler right now, you will see those themes in there. Uh, and we have a lot of new upcoming features as well. So including HTTP2 support and others outlined in the Fiddler roadmap, which is available on our website. I did do a quick shot here of some of those items that are coming up. But you can see from performance review, filtering, um, sessions and bandwidth simulation and say filters. Like again, if you haven't given Fiddler a look in a while, I definitely recommend checking it out, playing around with it. You know, Fiddler Everywhere does come with a 30 day free trial. Um, so you can play around your heart's desire and, and see what works best for you. So this is something that's pretty exciting. There is, this is not an audio clip, so don't worry, you're not missing anything. But this was a little teaser video that we put together for a new product that we have called Fiddler Jam. It's about 30 seconds. So it's just a real high level overview, but I want to dive a little bit more into Fiddler Jam and offer a distinction. You know, it, it does hold the Fiddler name and it is part of the Fiddler, uh, Fiddler family, but it is its own product and it serves a different purpose, although it has collaboration with Fiddler Everywhere. So what Fiddler Jam is, is a troubleshooting solution for support teams. And what this is going to do is this is going to streamline and simplify um, the process of sharing logs from an end user's perspective, and it makes it fast and easy for them to do so. And within, by sharing these logs, you get the full context. You get network logs, you get browser consoles, print screens of end user actions. So typically, imagine it this way, you're dealing with an end user who's experienced a problem. There might be a lot of back and forth trying to figure out what's going on. With Fiddler Jam, what you can do as a support team is provide the end user an easy to use Chrome extension to capture all that information and it, send it to you, sends it to you uh, within an email. So Fiddler Jam itself is comprised of you know, two main parts. We have the browser extension that your end users will use to capture exactly what is going on. So you have eyes on the problem. And also then the portal, which allows you to take that log that they sent you and really take a look to figure out what was going on. And if needed, you can send it off to your development team if you know, you're know you as the first pass QA need some more investigation. And I love this illustration. This is something that our team had put together and it kind of goes over what I shared a few minutes ago, uh, but maybe a little bit more succinct. You know, the end user of that Chrome extension you know, they have a self-service way and what they can do is they can share that information that I mentioned. But what's nice about this is that lots of times in the alternative ways of doing this, people or end users were concerned about sharing sensitive data, uh, but now we've eliminated that. You know, Fiddler Jam is a secure solution that allows them to do this. They don't have to download any software, they don't run into those traditional IT barriers or lockdowns. This is something that they can easily use. There's no onboarding required. Um, it's pretty much start capture, stop capture, share. So pretty one, two, three. Um, then those go on to the support team who they can do that initial analysis, you know, of the bug being reported. So they can see precisely what the end user is experiencing. And then that support agent can determine the proper resolution approach. Right. And then from there, they can go ahead and decide um, if this is something they want to pass off to their development team. And what's ideal um, in this scenario is that they have a worry for them is eliminated that they've missed something critical to the fix. Right. Because now they have everything 
full visibility. Um, and the developer team, right? Let's say it, something does get passed off to them from the support team. They have those portable data logs. And in most instances, they can resolve the issues on the fly you know, because they've provided all the context. There's none of that back and forth with the support team because everything is there. So they can easily start to complete an advanced log analysis. And I'm not gonna get into it as much today, but if on their end, they wanna even go further than the Fiddler Jam portal, we have set it up so it does integrate with Fiddler Everywhere, which is an added bonus. Um, so what I wanna to do today is just recommend that you check out the Fiddler family of products. You know, always contact me, I'm here. Um, to work with you. I'm excited about all that Fiddler has to offer and I'm excited to hear your feedback. So I know um, my colleague Cindy is on there. If she wants to go ahead, if there are any questions or comments, I can take them now and looking to see how we can help. Let's see if I have some questions here on the side. Oh, great, we got some good morning, some good afternoons. And Cindy shared in here, this is an eight week series and we're gonna be diving like into testing and all these different angles. And you can add them to your calendar. See, program with Dan, thank you so much. He says, I've used Fiddler countless times for debugging, redirecting traffic, proxies, et cetera, super useful tool. Love to hear that. I will definitely pass that along to our team. And we put the checklist in there. Really enjoyed spending the time with you here today. Hope maybe I'll be back. I may make a guest appearance here on a few of the other Monday uh, pest controls. I know there's some other Fiddler ones coming up, some advanced techniques. We even have one of our uh, Fiddler superstars, Robert, who will be presenting in 101. And if you guys have some ideas or there's something that you want to see, please drop them in the chat, send me an email, happy to help. But if that's it, I'm going to sign off and say until next time.